पुलिस यू आस्क यू डी सन चाहे वाई डू यू दैट बिकॉज वाई बिकॉज बिकॉज आई डेन इन फैसला No, because that's what it is. Why the bad people want there? That's what they are. That's how God has made them. People have no choice in being what they are. And so when you pass through a forest, how you save health? You know, you know that your this cloth can get stuck in the air. How you care? How do you negotiate? Have been to Ahmedabad? You people have been. You may have been. Have you seen the road conditions in Ahmedabad? If you are driving a vehicle in a city in the Ahmedabad city, it's a crazy place. Many are totally unpredictable. You just don't know who will what will come from what direction. It's more great. The greatest wonder of the world really is that people still reach safely. Not everybody, but most people reach safely. How do you do that? If you start fighting with people, they run scooter again, they just scrub again. That's what they do. They just rub against your car because it's three inch space. His scooter is six inches, and he, you know, he's trying to pass through that. In the beginning, you fight. Later on, you—that is how it is. People honk, keep on honking. We, when you go in from here, you just guys, what is going on here? You get mad. But people in Ahmedabad, they are not still pregnant. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> they make you a yogi, yeah. Any number of horns, okay. People cut you off, okay. This don't let you go because you know yeah. there is a you have right of way of going to land. But people stand there; they want to go straight, but they block this one. You keep on honking. Nothing happens. <laughs> so how we negotiate? Because I think you can get crazy just in one day. You can get crazy, and you need to go to mental hospital. Or is that what it is? You can't change them. We only can change ourselves by what our attitude. Then this is what it is. Be kind to them, not even tolerant to them. Even tolerance also is not a value. By tolerating somebody, I am as though obliging them. Even better than that is be kind to them. But he's honking. God bless him. He cut me off. God bless him. He put a scratch. God bless him. How can you say that is one way? Well, why not? Because the fact that the fellow is honking is has some problem inside. You know, all these things outside. This is a typical traffic situation, life situation. You know, many people do all kinds of things: cut you off, scratch you, pull your legs, do all kinds of things. You can't keep on fighting with everybody. What do you do? That is how it is. Everybody has a lot of problems within them. There's a lot of pain, and that pain comes out as honking, as shouting, as insulting, as misbehavior. All this thing that you do not like is all result of inner pain, and a human being is a very sad creature. Human life is very painful, and so we are hoping that after listening to this, we will be more intelligent and less painful our life will be. But most people don't know the benefit of knowing the basic realities of life. As to what attitude you should have, so wrong attitude will make us miserable. The right attitude is what makes us happy. So if happiness is purpose of life, then having right attitude, which are compatible to being happy, is the way to become happy. And that word, not only tolerating what others are. Gracefully accepting what they are, meaning that being kind to them. How you know when a dog barks at you, do you bark back? No. Do you curse him? No. Do you hate him? No. But when I see a child or something at one time, that that time, you know, my response is different. 
I do not give benefit to my child as much as I give it to him. Oh, can I believe that? Thus, understanding that this, this is how things are. And the way to negotiate. You can always negotiate your vehicle in that crazy traffic also. My number one, being accepting of others, not complaining about them, being alert and finding your way. In life also, not blaming, not complaining, all the time complaining and complaining about things, being in your trunk all the way up to the most everything, you know, keep on complaining. Some people get best to complain about it, but not about the spouse, not the, so the problem is, you know, that as far as we complain about Trump and senators and so, that's okay, no problem. They have nothing to do, they don't bother about their complaint anyway. It doesn't matter what you think about it. But if you keep on complaining about everything, why you want this too cold, what is too hot, too much salt, uh, every time. Calm down. Relax. That's what it is. Salt is too much, okay? Look at your Lord Dakshinamurti. See smile on his face? Or at your home also, you know. Little Krishna, whoever they stay there, all smiling at you, is it not so? Now, traditionally, when you perform puja, you also have a naivety. Food to God, isn't it? The Vaishnavas cook their own food, why you offer food? Does he ever complain? It's only later you realize that, oh, today what you offered that play, you know, the, there's too much salt. There's no salt. Too much spice. No spice. He never complains. He's always smiling. And that's why we are comfortable with him. The only place we are comfortable is with this Lord Krishna. I mean, with, with Devata. He's always smiling. We know that we are only accepted here, then he is not going to reject us. Similarly, when we are going to treat others, when they can feel comfortable with us. Not afraid that they will walk in, you do, Swami, I am being careful, you never know, you know, you just blow off. So we can also be somebody where people are comfortable. Show that here is the place where I am going to be accepted as I am. If you remember, that's what the children told here, you know. How they felt about their grandfather. They felt loved, accepted. Could be a friend. You can play with him. You can do all kinds. I mean, we were what we were, I'm sure, but then we were all accepted, we always felt comfortable going there. So similarly, we can be like that when people are comfortable. That's the way you can contribute to the comfort of other people, by creating comfort. So that is called a life of contribution. Continue to the comfort of others. Make them feel good in your presence. Swami used to say, anywhere people in your presence, let them feel good. There are some people who specialize. Moment somebody comes, they'll put him down. You know. no. Let them feel good in your presence. Let them be accepted. No more Swami is person like this. That's what they are. Lord Krishna gives a nice formula. How to treat others? Lord Krishna says that in every situation, sukham vaya diva dukham. Whether it is sukham or dukham, happiness or unhappiness. Treat others as you treat yourself. With reference to happiness, how do I treat myself? I always want to make myself happy. With reference to unhappiness, how do I treat myself? I do not want to make myself unhappy, isn't it? Give that much respect to others. Give to others the respect that you give yourself. 
wish happiness of them, then they should not become unhappy. Not easy, but these are the things. You know what all these things does? What is the attitude? What is the one we get out of this family? You get happiness out of that. Which happiness? Happiness is that in your own child. Because all these this rejecting, complaining, blaming, retaliating, reacting, all this is ignorance. It is ignorance that is depriving us of the happiness which we ourselves are. And the way to gain the happiness to get rid of ignorance. Unfortunately, the whole world is functioning on wrong attitude. They think that tit for tat is the right way. But that's the wrong way. So not tit for tat. Then what? Kindness for that. Not take for that. Kindness for that. <clears throat> Thus we transform ourselves. The idea is that we slowly transform ourselves. You be a kind person, a good person, a giving person, a charitable person, generous person. But Swami didn't say, Ivana is a medium, exploit me. Let them exploit you. Because more they exploit you, uh, more happy you become. So this is the purpose of life is to be happy. And to fulfill that purpose, there is this way of life with these basic attitudes and values. <coughs> That's what the Gita teaches us. And for them, we don't have to go for us, fortunately, you know. For being kind, you don't need to go to forest. Where we are is okay. Maybe that's where the challenge is. I can be easily kind with trees because they don't react. I can be kind to nature because it doesn't react. I can be kind to animals also because they don't react. But it's difficult to, kind, to be kind to people who don't reciprocate your kindness. No challenge. The more the challenge is, better is the opportunity to grow. So that's how fulfilling purpose of life is not in one day, it's a process. As long as when we take up the right process in our life, then we keep discovering the happiness from ourselves. <clears throat> so this is the purpose of life. That's one topic. Other topic is how to conquer the fear of death. Fear we have to confront really. Is fear something that we do not confront? Mind, why are you afraid? What will happen? If the stress is, lot of stress is from fear. What will happen when the boss does this? What will happen when my job goes? What will happen this, this, way? all kinds of things are when the mind imagines and then all these circumstances there is fear. Basically, there is fear because we are not willing to face the unpleasant. We are not willing to face the painful. We will avoid pain. What is the pain comes? It will come. There is something called prarabdha, something called destiny, which brings pleasure and pain in our life, something that we cannot change. To some extent you can change by prayers, etc. But what is going to happen is going to happen. Janma, Mrtu, Jarab, Vyadi, Lord Krishna says that there is birth, then there is death. And before that is old age. And with that there is the disease. This easy sequence. And never more we think about the realities of life. Lord Krishna says, Constantly aware that this is what life is. Dukkha, the pain is there. And whether we like it or not, it's going to be there. So being prepared for the reality of life. Not resisting. Not rejecting. 
then we are in the mind. We are developing comfort in the reality of life. So death also is the reality. It's going to happen today or tomorrow. Whether you are afraid or not, it's going to happen. And so, ask the mind, why are you afraid? What will happen if I die? What will happen? In fact, you know, as far as Hindus are concerned, this death is not the end of life, understand? It's only a station. In India, we used to have those three you know, junctions, you know, three junction. So, junction is a place where you go and change the train. Sometimes second junction, third junction, by the time I'm here, when you reach your destination. Death is not the end, it is a junction station for changing the train. Number one, we should know that. It is not the end of the thing. Life never ends. Life continues from one embodiment to the Lord says that, hey, this body has become old now, let it go, I'll give you a fresh body. So next verse really is starting the life afresh, you know, because now this body has done its job. And Ishwara wants us to have a new fresh body from where we can continue. And one good thing is that we go there when the next birth with all the wisdom. So whatever wisdom we have gained here, whatever, all of that comes with us. Oh Swami, does it mean I should not go to school next time? No, that's not the point. <laughs> so there were like a few boys and you know, and the, the, uh, but it, the test is coming and it's so tough and then one of them is going to commit suicide. So why? He was the high school senior. How do you do that? Ah, it's too much. I don't want to appear for the test. He said, when you want again, you look start from the beginning, you know, so better. Again, you will go to the 11th grade, you know, so you already got the 12th grade, so better continue. So you, there is nothing, there's nothing to lose. It's, it's life is going to be, this is a journey. We are all on a spiritual journey. And even the family, what will happen to my family members? Nothing is going to happen, you know. Don't think that you created them. What are my children? You did not create them. The children came, you know, you became instrument in doing them in this life. But they have their own destiny. They are independent travelers or pilgrims in the life, spiritual life. So you must have heard this in the past. How oh, when we travel in the trains, you know, in India, the train journey is one day long, one and a half days long, and you get, you know, in the same compartment, and you don't know each other, and then slowly you start talking, and then uh, acquaintance, acquaintance, and then you pay all your lunch, and then that you start sharing, and it's soon enough, you become friends, and exchange, and now those days emails are not there, but exchange some address, etc. But we know that he has to go down and Dehradun comes, he has to come in there and uh, Saridwar is to get down. Rishika is that for us to get down. Dehradun is for us to get down. You don't start crying and stuff like that. You know, that's going to happen. So when you know it's going to happen, then we are, we are prepared for it. And so what is going to happen is going to happen. And there are graceful acceptance and be prepared. Don't think that the world is going to come to an end without you or without me. Like it. it was there before we were there, it is there when we are there, it will be there when we will not be there. Children also are there, everybody will be there, everybody has come with the own prarabdha. And somebody has given them the birth and then he's going to take care of them. There's no point in worrying about anybody, no point in worrying about ourselves. This fear is on account of not confronting and not account of accepting the realities of life. So more comfortable we become in the realities of life, less fear there is, more prepared we are. And so death is an inevitable thing. Nothing. So this was the celebration of death. That's what your father said. Mrityu Mahotsa. A festival of death. Death can become a festival. Provided we are living intelligently. Now, 
the way the dance can become a festival is if we live a life when progressively we are getting more and more satisfaction with ourselves. The true happiness success is that I am satisfied with myself. So more satisfaction we discover ourselves, more it becomes a celebration. At the end of the life, you feel that you lived well. You done what you could do, you contributed what you could. It is a satisfaction that one has about one's own life is what makes it a celebration. And how do we do that? Just by the values that we talked about, by the attitudes, is being kind to others, forgiving to others, accommodating others, You're making them comfortable, making them happy. Let them take advantage and let them exploit it. What will you give? They can't take away more than you know what you have. And you, they, nobody can take away what is not what is in my prarabdha. And nobody can give me what is not in my prarabdha. So let each one take care of that. Within limits. When you grow old, you can afford. When you are perhaps young, you cannot afford. But afterwards, when you retire, what's the big deal? Okay, let them exploit. The small a giver you are, more a contributor you are, more satisfaction derived from your life, and that is how death becomes a festival. When you satisfied on yourself, when dying is not a problem at all. Because living has been a process of contribution and joy. It's up to us to live that life so that death is not a threat. Not that I am inviting that, but you can come. I am willing to welcome it if it comes. Not that I am inviting. Whatever time I have is a bonus. I make the best use of it. That's another thing also. From what Lord Krishna says, time is very precious. We don't have a lot of time. Someday this is going to take away from us and they will make the best use of time. What's the best use of time? And I just say, contribute. Make somebody comfortable. If nobody is, your spouse will begin from there. So charity can begin from our home. But at least we can make our spouse comfortable and accepted and gracefully accepting, comfortable, make them happy. Then extend it further to the other family. And then that's how. Then you know satisfaction about our own life. And that will not be such a big problem as it will be. <clears throat> so thus, conquering fear of death is number one. Accepting that death is inevitable. There is nothing I can do about it. Number two, death is not the end of life, it is a station for the next embodiment. Number three, by my dad, nothing will happen to the world. Well, it will continue whether I am here or not. Number four, that I can make my death also a celebration by living a meaningful life of values and attitudes. Then, death will also be as very acceptable as anything else, because that's also reality. <coughs> so with that, I conclude here. And uh, we congratulate on Motamai. And I'm very happy with what all I listen from the children as to how he has been a great support, a loving support, how he has nurtured them, nourished them, loved them. And enjoy them. I mean, after what whoever is in your life, you enjoy it. So therefore having people around you, related to you in your life is a great gift that each one has given. And the best way to enjoy the gift are by making them happy. Do what you can do for them. That's what he has done. And so that way he set an example for this other generation as to how to live happily. 
and how to proceed in our life towards the purpose of life of discovering that happiness. So we congratulate and we wish him a healthy life. And he still has projects from Jafrabad and wants to build a hospital and stuff like that. You know, let him do that. You know, what are best he thinks is good, you know, that is his cho choice as to what he thinks the best use of his time and energy. As long as the time and energy are, are expanded in helping others, in doing good to others, that's a very noble cause. So we pray that Lord gives him that strength as well as resources to carry out also his next objective of building a Rudrasham, an old people's home. I guess, I don't know why he wants to build Rudrasham because he, see, Rudrasham is for people who are not very happy. You think of people, you know, old age home, when you know that you need that home. I don't know, he doesn't need that. But still, I guess he sympathizes with the needs of others and wants to have created an infrastructure where people can feel comfortable, even away from the family. So with that, I conclude with a prayer.